In this video, I will give you a quick introduction to Google Analytics 4. This is necessary if you want to understand how to install it on your website. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. This video is a part of video series called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. Soon, I will be explaining how to install Google Analytics 4 with Google Tag Manager. But first, I wanted to give you a quick introduction to GA4. If you are already familiar with it, then check the description of this video to go to the next lesson. All right, so let's dive in. Before we dive deeper, first, I wanted to give you a very brief introduction to Google Analytics 4. Now, what you should keep in mind is that this course is Google Tag Manager course. So we focus on data collection, not on data analysis or how to navigate Google Analytics 4 reports. That is why I will not be teaching you how to use things like Analysis Hub or some other advanced features. We are focusing on data collection. So first, let's have a very brief introduction to Google Analytics 4, and then we'll learn how to send data to Google Analytics, like events, including page views, scroll events, and so on. So I hope that you and I are on the same page right now regarding expectations from this course. And now we can take a quick look at what GA4 is in general. So Google Analytics 4 is the latest version of Google Analytics that allows you to track things like website data and mobile app data and see that data in a single property. For example, if you have, let's say, three websites that are part of the same user journey, and also you have two mobile apps, one for Android and one for iOS, all of them can be tracked in a single Google Analytics 4 property. That is possible because of a new hierarchy that is available in Google Analytics 4. We have data streams. In other words, we have sources of data. And from those data streams, the data is coming in to your Google Analytics 4. Data streams are controlled in the admin panel of Google Analytics that you can find by clicking this gear icon in the bottom left corner and then going to the property column by choosing data streams. When you click it, you will be offered to create your first data stream. Of course, if you haven't yet created one. And as you can see, there are three types, iOS, Android app, and then website. If your business does not have mobile apps, that is not a problem. You can have just website data streams in your Google Analytics 4. So let's say that I click this, and then here I will need to enter the URL of the website, and I will need to enter the stream name right here. Also, a new feature in Google Analytics 4 compared to previous versions is enhanced measurement. Enhanced measurement is a set of features in Google Analytics 4 that is responsible for tracking more events because in the previous version of Google Analytics, you were tracking only page views. But right now, you can also track things like scrolling, outbound link clicks, site search, video engagement, and file downloads. I mean, site search was also available in the previous version of Google Analytics, but right now it is turned into an event. When you want to create a new data stream, you must enter the URL of your website and enter, let's say, GTM Sandbox website or something like that. Or if you want, you can just enter the same URL right here. Also, I see that I have mistakenly added the HTTPS right here. So you should not include that because it is included in the drop down right here. Now click create stream. And then you will see a view like this. This is your data streams measurement ID. This is an equivalent to the previously known tracking ID, which was starting with UA dash and something something. Now all the measurement IDs start with G dash and then some random numbers and strings. As always, you have several options how to install Google Analytics 4. One is by adding gtag JS code to the source code of the website. So this must be done by your developers. But obviously, in this course, we will focus on the Google Tag Manager option. And in the upcoming videos, I will show you how to do that. If you are familiar with the previous version of Google Analytics, you know that there were various hit types like page views, events, social interactions, and all the other stuff. But right now in Google Analytics 4, everything is an event. So here is a quick comparison of hit types in Google Analytics 4 and the previous version. So we had page views, we had events, e-commerce data. So this is just standard e-commerce data, then social interactions, timing, and so on. In Google Analytics 4, there are no other hit types except event. That is why Google Analytics 4 is called event-based analytics platform. And when you start getting some data into your reports, I mean, when you start sending events and some additional information, then that data will be displayed in reports. So we have acquisition reports, we have engagement reports, here we see some page view and event information. Now, when I'm saying page view, I'm actually 
still referring to events actually, because page view is just an event that is called page view. Then if you implement e-commerce tracking, that data will appear in monetization. Then we have some additional reports right here, tech and demographic reports. Also, let's not forget conversions. In the previous version, they were called goals, but right now that term has changed into a more standard one, which is called just conversions. Then we have the list of all events. So everything you will be sending to Google Analytics, you will see right here. Then we have an analysis section. So this one is quite powerful. However, it's also more advanced. The main difference right now between Google Analytics 4 and the previous versions is that previous version had more predefined reports where you could just quickly check one thing or another. Now, in Google Analytics 4, we have a lot of more advanced reports such as exploration, but you will need to know how to navigate those. Then we have things like debug view, which is very useful, and we will use this multiple times throughout this course. Right now, let's just make a very quick look into several types of reports in Analysis Hub. So first of all, we have an exploration report, and then you will see a view that looks something like this. This a bit reminds of Google Data Studio. Of course, the dimensions panel is on the right side in Data Studio, but nevertheless, you can include various dimensions in a report. So for example, if I want to see my visitors not based on city, but on country instead, then I will see a table like this. And I can also select what kind of values or in other words, metrics when I see if I want to add more dimensions or metrics that are not available in this list, I can click on this plus icon and then select from a much larger list of dimensions. Also, if you want, you can use a different type of report, not just table, but also you can use other types like map, then there are some other types, but once again, it's up to you to uh, play around and discover. Also, if you want, you can create additional tabs. Let's say one tab is with exploration. The other one might have some other types. In fact, let's take a look at another example, which is really cool as well. I really like the funnel analysis part because in the previous version of Google Analytics, funnel reporting just sucked. I mean, I really hated funnel reports back there, including things like goal funnels, that were not retroactive. In Google Analytics 4, the funnel reports are much more flexible and they are, of course, retroactive. So you can just select several events and the report will show you the funnel, including the past data. Of course, as long as you have been collecting that data. To create a funnel, you should go to steps section and click the pencil icon and then enter all the steps that you want to include in your funnel. Let's start with a very simple example. On my blog, I have opt-in forms and I'm sending two custom events to Google Analytics 4. One is when a visitor enters his or her email in my opt-in form. And then the other event is when that email address is confirmed. So this means that when a visitor clicks a link, I mean the double opt-in link uh, in their inbox. So let's name the first step initiated opt-in and then let's select the condition. So my first step is when I send an event of which name is initiated opt-in. And then the second step of the funnel is confirmed opt-in. And this step consists of an event of which name is confirmed email opt-in. Of course, you could include more steps, but right now I'm just showing a very, very basic example and then click apply. And here we see that this is how many users have initiated the opt-in and only 62% actually even less than 62% have completed. So this means that something is wrong. Maybe some people just don't get the email. Maybe that email lands in their spam inbox or maybe something else is happening. So I should definitely dig into that and try to find out what is the possible reason. Also, maybe bots are causing some issues because this event is fired when a visitor is redirected to a certain page that asks to confirm the email address. So maybe, you know, bots are submitting forms Maybe they're also loading Google Analytics 4, and that is why this discrepancy is so large. But once again, I would need to dig into that because this is a quite leaky funnel and I would need to work more on that. And then there is one more report type that I wanted to show you. Actually, there are more, but I just want to focus on coolest ones, in my opinion, and that is path analysis. So basically, path analysis is the next generation of the flow reports in Universal Analytics. Actually, flow reports in the older version were kind of lame because you could not do a lot with them. But with path analysis, some of the long awaited features are introduced. Here's the cool thing about the new report. When you start it, actually click start over and then you will have two options. 
Do you want to go from the start to the end? Or do you want to start from the end? And actually, this part was very much requested. We can define, let's say, the final conversion, and then we can go from that conversion backwards and see where the visitors are coming from. Which pages did they visit before? Which events did they make? And so on. So this is really cool. So let's say that I want to start with from the ending point, then event name, and then let's say, yeah, convert email opt-in. And then from here, I can see that before the event, there was always a page view, but this is obvious because I probably also send a page view on the email opt-in confirmation page. But then if I click that one, I will see this event. Let's dig deeper. Then we see initiated opt-in. Then I see the page view right here. So this is quite interesting. I see the confirmed opt-in. Then I see the initiated opt-in. And now I can take a look at what kind of page views did that happen? Then I click right here and I mean, yeah, we can go backwards. Uh, I'm not sure how many steps, probably like up to 10 steps, I guess. I haven't checked that. So sorry for possible misinformation, but like you can definitely find something interesting right here. Now, speaking of other report types, I can also mention things like user explorer. So this is quite similar to the reports that were available in universal analytics. Then we have segment overlap. So segment overlap basically is that we built several segments and you can check how they are overlapping. Then we have cohort analysis. But as I've said, other reports are for your own discovery. So that was a very brief introduction to Google Analytics 4. So what you should keep in mind right now is that it is an event-based analytics platform and everything that you send is an event. And if you want to send some additional data with an event, you will need to do that with custom parameters. And that was a quick introduction to Google Analytics 4. Now, let's learn how to install it with Google Tag Manager. You will find a link to the next lesson in the description of this video. By the way, if you want to learn more, I have two ebooks that you can download. Google Tag Manager for Beginners and Getting Started with Google Analytics 4. You will find the links below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.